Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here. So, I am up in Edinburgh today and I'm doing an interview with the head of the Edinburgh Assay Office, Scott. He has very kindly given us access to some incredibly special things. I've also got my own Silver Forum round up here. It's in very esteemed company with some incredibly special pieces. So, not only are we going to talk about what the Edinburgh Assay Office is all about, what it does, what uh, hallmarking means, but also we've got some real treats to share with you guys along the way. So the best place to start, I suppose, Scott, is just uh, a quick hello and introduction. So uh, tell us about uh, yourself and the Edinburgh Assay Office. Um, well, first of all, my, my role here is, is, is Assay Master. That means that I'm responsible for running the Assay Office. Modern day uh, terms, I'm the chief executive here. Um, but the term Assay Master dates back to 1682 when the first Assay Master was, was employed. Yeah. Uh, hallmarking in Edinburgh goes back uh, to 1457. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a very historic thing, hallmarking. It's it is. It's something that people don't always know that it's been around for centuries. If you, if you understand the nature of hallmarking, you're un you'll understand the importance uh, uh, that it had and the part that it played then. And it's remarkable how relevant that still is yeah so so for a lot of my viewers out there who are not in the uk and a lot of you out there who are watching this will be in the usa for example might not even know what the word hallmarking means sure. so just in a very quick as quick as you can overview what's a hallmark the term hallmark simply means that something has been brought to the hall to be marked and there you go so this as. and this is goldsmith's hall it was a goldsmith's hall in London also, so when something was taken to the hall, it was marked. And that's where the term comes from. And in sort of today's mod, like, so I've got here my modern piece of bullion, which I've had hallmarked. That, from my perspective, means that I've had it tested and that the Edinburgh Assay Office is 100% confident. It is what I say it is. It's silver, it's 999 silver. And you've put a mark on it, you've put that hallmark on it so that everybody else that ever sees this, touches it, buys it, sells it, whatever, they know that it's 999 silver. Correct. I mean, that, that in essence is what the ASI office does. What we uh, have always been involved in is consumer protection. Now, at one time, um, as a trade guild, and that's how the ASI office would have started, it would have been makers who were governed by a guild, a trade guild, that was a, 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 an organisation that managed the quality of the trade, and the incorporation of Goldsmiths of, Ned, Ned, of Edinburgh were able to form a fairly significant guild. They were able to apply marks uh, which would uh, ensure that whoever was buying product from a silversmith or a goldsmith in Edinburgh would, would have the guarantee of the guild. I think that's, that's the key, isn't it? Because the, the whole reason for, for this was to protect the consumer to protect the public. It, it was also to protect the reputation of, 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 of the uh, trade because a guild is there to ensure that any trade doesn't fall into uh, ill repute. It protects the, uh, the integrity of its trade. Sadly, things like guilds don't exist in the same form anymore, but from that, um, that guild structure, the, the uh, ASI offices were given their first, you know, the ASI office in Edinburgh certainly was given its first royal charter uh, around about uh, uh, the 1680s. And around about the same time, they would have uh, employed the first ASI master yeah. um, because it became a, an organisation in its own right beyond the guild. Yeah. So this very early piece that we've got here. And this, um, this by the way, is so special, this spoon. I'm not even allowed to touch it. I've got my black gloves on for some of the other things, but this is an incredibly special piece, so you guys are in for a treat here. Tell us about this spoon and why it's important and significant. Well, this one predates uh, um, the, the, the date letter, which was introduced, uh, and it, it predates the, uh, the use of um, uh, the employ employment of an assay master. So this is very early days. This is 1579. The, the maker of this is uh, none other than George Herriot, who, is, uh, who, who, who was a prominent Edinburgh goldsmith, in fact, uh, was a banker to, uh, to the king. Uh, um, and this spoon bears his mark, George Herriot's mark, but it also bears the 
the deacon of the incorporations mark. So he actually, back then, the deacon of the trade guild, uh, that's the uh, chairman of the trade guild, would apply his mark alongside it to guarantee it. So this is a very early form of a hallmark and one of the earliest pieces that was hallmarked by what is now the Edinburgh Assay Office. So a very, very special piece. Indeed, definitely. So when I said my humble little piece of hand silver was in some esteemed company, I was not lying. That is a very special piece indeed. Thank you for that. Um, there's another little thing on the table here which should be good to just jump into. So this is a little display box of some uh, silver ingots. Uh, Scott, tell us a little bit about this because this looks to me like a collection of what I would have said is UK hallmarks, but there's also Dublin in here. Uh, so what's this all about? In 1999, uh, the ASI offices in, in Dublin and in the UK <clears throat> decided to do a commemorative mark uh, for the millennium. So they're slightly different because uh, the UK you can see is a cross with the uh, yeah. 2000. So we've got the, the four ASI offices of the United Kingdom uh, and then we've got obviously Dublin as well. So Dublin commissioned these um, and asked each one of us to uh, apply our mark. Uh, so you can see uh, this one here has the leopard head, which is London. Yep. Uh, this one here has the castle, which is our own from Edinburgh. Okay. These two um, have the Yorkshire Rose, which is Sheffield. Yep. Uh, and Hibernia, which is the symbol for the Dublin Assay Office. And here we have the Birmingham Anchor. Yep. It's fascinating that uh, something like this was, was commissioned. It's really nice to see all of them out here together. And of course that kind of brings me neatly on to the next point which is that there are more than one assay office in the UK and of course there is the Dublin assay office as well. Why are there more than one? I well, think, well we touched on it I think in the first question that you know dating back centuries but why are there more than one in sort of this modern global village that we live in now? Are you all part of the same organisation or are you all individual entities? Well let, let, let me explain that. Um, when hallmarking uh, went through its various different guises through the centuries, um, the location of ASI offices was usually um, a result of uh, necessity. Mm. So you have London ASI office who are about 700 years old, uh, and obviously London was a centre of commerce and, uh, and um, art. Uh, so having an ASI office um, responsible for gold and silver standards was essential. Edinburgh, similarly, a capital city um, and the second financial capital outside of uh, London had an assay office and a guild of goldsmiths in a very similar way uh, to London. Sheffield and Birmingham came about only, when I say only, uh, it's relative in assay terms, but only about 200 and 30, 240 years ago. Yeah. And they came about through industrial necessity. Uh, when the Industrial Revolution uh, took hold, you had industrial cutlery manufacture yeah. in Sheffield. Sheffield, with, Sheffield with, silver with, with, is, is world famous. So. And, this, and the steel, of course, because of the steel industry there, cutlery it was like it became a centre for cutlery. Uh, and, uh, and in Birmingham, um, famous industrial city uh, became famous for uh, flatware. Uh, table well, it's, because it's also it's famous produced. today for its jewellery quarter as well. It's, it's and the jewellery quarter now. Yeah. Um, so th basically, there there were two the the the, 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 the two assay offices, Birmingham and Sheffield, came about as a result of an industrial necessity because they yeah. they didn't want to have to send everything yeah. by horse and cart. Well, no, that's, that's the anyway. thing. So t today, I've flown up with a giant pile of silver, uh, which you'll have seen in the vlog which I put out last weekend. Um, you know, so you can just imagine that uh, people 200 years ago would not have been able to do that. So sending it all by horse and cart would have been very risky, very arduous, time consuming. So it makes sense to have them kind of geographically all around. And to, to answer the second part of your question, in this modern age, why are there four ASI offices? I think simply um, each ASI office is structured in the, same, in the same way by modern terms in that we are completely independent, we are not for profit. So we are here to provide a hallmarking service because the law demands that hallmarking is required. We're self-funded, yeah. so all the, the, all the money that runs the ASI office comes from the charges that are applied to hallmarking. Uh, there are no shareholders, yeah. there, are no, uh, there are no profit gainers. 
we are here uh, to fulfill an independent third party hallmarking service yeah. to allow the jewellery and silversmithing uh, community to meet the uh, regulations of the Hallmarking Act. Yeah. We're set up independently um, so that we create what's called an oligopoly. So you have four asset offices that gives each person the choice of where they want to go. Yeah. That ensures that prices are retained at low level, yeah. maintained at a low level, and it ensures that there's a, an impetus for each asset office to continue to develop its services. So it's a, a competitive environment. Yeah, I can imagine. But where we are absolutely aligned is in our technical uh, approach um, and the regulations that we enforce. And we work together as a joint asset office committee for the UK mm -hmm. uh, to develop uh, and maintain the processes that are involved in testing and the processes uh, involved in interpreting the Hallmarking Act as a rule book. So you will get the same set of rules applied in the same way uh, uh, regardless of which ASI office you go to. We are regulated by a common body which is the British Hallmarking Council and the British Hallmarking Council will report directly to the Secretary of State and advise the Secretary of State on any changes that need to take place. So it's all very serious stuff and as you can see that's why a Hallmark is so world renowned and, and respected and is a really important part of things that I make here and you know even though some of the things that people might make might not legally require a hallmark if it's just a bar or a piece of bullion that's you know even like these ingots I would imagine it's not a legal requirement to have hallmarks but, but bullion is exempt from hallmark yeah um, but um, I think what you're demonstrating very clearly is that there's a huge value that's added by the hallmark yeah. well it's a commitment to quality it's a commitment yep. to uh, the guarantee of its purity and just yeah, that, that's the way that certainly I want to, and I know a lot of other businesses want to work, uh, which is really, really interesting. So, talking about the competition, so to speak, uh, I know you also work together and it's not necessarily a big old competition, uh, but what sets Edinburgh apart from some of the other assay officers out there? Why would somebody, uh, like myself, I, I joined Edinburgh, but why would somebody else want to join Edinburgh? What do you guys do, which is different or better in your opinion? I think we, we've always tried to uh, focus on our customers so we are we, we understand that yes we are independent and absolutely you would expect an asset office to be completely independent and uh, to provide uh, that integrity however um, you would also hope that the way in which hallmarking works and the services that we provide would be as friendly and as easy to use as possible. My background many years ago was as a manufacturer. I was a customer here before I um, ran the ASI office and my perspective has always been uh, that of the, the jeweler of the manufacturer. We want to provide a value add service. We want to make it as easy as possible uh, and we want to employ the technology, the modern technology and modern uh, processes to provide that. Um, so ease of use, friendly, accessible, uh, approachable, but ultimately we're here to pass and fail. That's good. And I have to back Scott up there, you know, from my perspective, just as a, as a tiny small business, because you guys work with some of the biggest brands out there. It's, we're not just talking, you know, little artisan products like this piece of hand-poured silver. We're talking stream, streamlines of major high street brand jewellery that comes through the Edinburgh Assay Office. Um, so just to put it in perspective, if you can, what kind of kind of volume do you guys work to? How busy are you at the moment? Have you seen a sort of trend increase over these last couple of years, months? How's things going generally? I think the industry has, uh, uh, the, the increases in, in, in gold prices uh, as a raw material have driven uh, much of the uh, nine carat market, which is the uh, lowest standard of gold, 3.375 uh, as a decimal uh, fraction. Most of that product um, has become too expensive 
to make and to sell at the price point that uh, is desired. So a large part of the market has, has disappeared. Um, Interesting, okay. But, um, I mean, on, 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 our busiest, on our busiest day, we would do 20,000 units. Uh, so that's on an average day we would do 10,000 units. So that's individual yes. items that yes. have, have the hallmark put on that's them. Yeah. Certainly puts my submissions where I send 50 or 60 little pieces up for hallmarking into, I mean, we into have, its place. We have it? very different product streams. Yes. A product like yours would be would come in a, 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 on a, a process stream that would involve a very different set of hands. Yeah. Um, and your products are, of course, hand-marked. Yeah. Um, they are uh, destructively tested, so we drill and remove some material to make sure there's no lead in the centre. Yeah. We don't trust anyone. We're not no, here to trust. I, I don't here. take it personally. It's, we're, we're, it's fine. We, we provide a service for you where we fill that again. Yes. Um, but um, that is an absolute requirement. So we ensure that this is silver all the way through and then we strike the marks by hand, and that's usually by our master marker or, or his apprentice. Yeah. In contrast, we have a range of other streams, so for instance, if, if someone's submitting 4,000 units, um, those 4,000 units would go through a very, very different process um, and uh, a process that involved uh, a far bigger group of people yeah. and a, 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 a more uh, regimented uh, control process. Um, sure and usually machine marking or laser marking. Yeah, so, uh, well, that's a whole different topic. We could sit here for hours and talk about uh, all the different aspects that you can uh, incorporate into a product if you wanted. Laser marking, hand marking, machine marking. Um, we've got so many more questions to get through, but I think now is a good place to take a break, have a uh, quick glass of water, and then I'm actually gonna put a cut in here Part two of this interview is gonna come out tomorrow, guys. So if you want to see that, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the little like button as well if you enjoyed this video. Part two coming out tomorrow, make sure you stick around and catch that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and please make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.